Hello, I'm going to show you how to install the QGIS Processing Saga Next Generation Provider, um, which is the preferred way of installing the Saga functionality into QGIS. So I'm going to start by going to QGIS. There's two main components to installing Saga inside QGIS, and that is to one, install the plugin, and also to install Saga itself. Um, we're going to start by going to the plugin menu, manage and install plugins, and um, I'm going to do a search for Saga, and there's this one that's called Processing Saga Next Gen Provider. If you do not see that there, you'll notice that it's an experimental version, so you may need to turn on in your settings to show experimental plugins. So just make sure this checkbox right here is, is checked. Um, and then go back to All, and then do your search, and you should be able to find Processing Saga. So I'm going to go ahead and install that plugin. And you'll notice that it does say that it requires a manual installation of the Saga 7.2 binaries. It might work with some other versions, but we're going to be best off if we stick with that 7.2 version. Uh, so the next step is to go to the website for Saga. Um, it's saga-gis.org. Um, and on this page, I'll go just go to the downloads. And I'm running on Windows, so um, I'll be sure to look for the Windows installer. So here's the Saga 7 folder. Here's 7.2. Look inside here, and um, there's these various versions here, and I'm just going to look down below at the notes. So uh, most operating systems are 64-bit, um, and I'm going to just use the um, the zip file here that has the binaries uh, for Windows. So you just unzip it, and then you just need to put that into location, and then point QGIS to that. Um, there's also installer version. You'll need administrator rights, um, but this binary should just work fine. So it's just the 7.2.0 x64 so that's this one right here so i'm going to download that here we are I'll save that to my folder looks like it's about 62 megabytes so it may take a few seconds all right and once that finishes loading you should have the zip file so i'm going to extract that here and now i have a folder that has all the parts needed for saga so the next step is to put this somewhere uh, where I won't accidentally delete it. I like to put these sorts of things into what I call mine. I'm going to just uh, cut this. I want to put it in this installed folder runtime that I put these sorts of things in. All right, so I now have that there, and I'm going to need to point to this location from QGIS is the next step. So back in QGIS, um, I've installed the plugin. I'm going to close that window. Um, it doesn't show up in the processing toolbox yet. I need to go to this wrench uh, options dialog and look at the providers. And now I see that Saga Next Generation is showing up here. So I'm going to, I need to point this to where it should go. And I think I already set this previously. Um, but let me find that folder, install runtime. And I'm just pointing to the top level Saga folder there. And once I've selected that, um, I'll also want to check the box to enable, um, yeah, enabling op optimizations. That sounds great. Um, one other thing you might want to do, the old built-in Saga thing, which I believe is going away at some point, uh, just make sure that's not activated just to prevent confusion between these two. And I'll click OK. And now you can see the Saga Next Gen Processing Toolbox opens up here. I have all these tools. Let's maybe do something like Majority Filter. And I'll try Majority Filter from the Saga tools. And let's see, I'll do a square, radius one. Great, and then I can copy the style, paste it onto the new output. So there's the filtered, that's what it looked like before. So it looks like Saga Next Gen is up and running.